Uh, well. So how was that reception at the panel? I thought it was amazing. Amazing. It, yeah, it was a uh, uh, good speech it's about it, really, because it, it, you, you can't do what you want to do, and you can't say what you want to say. Not really, because it was it was only because of that group of people and the extension of it, really. And they're so beautiful, but there's no... I felt frustrated that we couldn't get out of Hagen almost. Do you know what I mean? Or really, uh, really express what I personally feel for those people, the people that have, have been so supportive. But there you are, you're stuck at a table and you go, you can't jump off the edge. <laughs> Which would be nice. And felt like it went too fast. Like, we, we really just, oh, I love them. I really adore the bit where uh, Jessica and and Josh got tear you know. because that's what we kind of feel like but we couldn't all sit up there and cry you know. <laughs> it's very touching though. it was very touching and you know it's terribly sincere there have been lots of people crying this year so you're not the only one I know <laughs> you had a five line yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> so do you yet know how Walter's journey will end no I don't I, no I don't I, I have very strong opinions about what that we should completely out that being the perpetrator of this disaster that has been that started for each, that he needs to resolve that needs to be resolved you know, I'm not saying we send him to the, the hard war criminals court or anything but, but somehow or other emotionally and spiritually it will be evolved, it will be resolved because my story arc it has to be you can't leave that hanging you know, in a sense what he did all did for the right reasons was really bad and, and, and created and as much as he's redeemed himself I think there still needs to be some resolution do you think he needs to be punished? I think he's had his punishment I think he's been punished enough but I think he you know it's almost like a personal journey like his resolution of, okay, I've done that all I can to repair what I caused. No, I think it would be a really emotional thing. Um, no punishment is plenty of every day loses. Um, which is a good thing, you know. Yeah. I think so. As far as I know, we said goodbye to him. The Auburn University last year. Are you going to play? Yeah, he was fun. <laughs> he was great fun. I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you what, when, when, when I think it was in the season three they introduced him to the Auburn University, I, I, I said, this is going to be so hard because the, the audience is already invested in these characters and they like these characters. They won't like these people. And, and I said, no, I hate Walter become the art and I, I would say to the writers, that's fine, I can do it, I can do it, but please give him some redeeming treatment, you know, make him a human being, which they sort of did as a went on. So going from the art of the whole time, it wasn't quite so bad, it was great fun playing that. Very powerful character. So how have you changed the archetype of the math scientist? really transform that in pop culture. And I'm wondering, what, what's your favourite way in which his character meets the classic mess? Uh, he's humanised him. This comes from scientists themselves that speak to me. Scientists that have come to me and said, thank you, that you have, you have made us human beings. You've know, made us human beings with feelings and, and people who acknowledge, um, who, who, who acknowledge their hubris, which is their fact of life who acknowledge the damage that they do within their lives but are still prepared to keep going. They'll go through fits of intense depression. Um, who love their children. And they still do outrageous things. Um, who live in a, in, a, in a very isolated world because people that smart really don't relate to too many people. And, and a series of and a lot of scientists. And a bloke yesterday who was a scientist and said, I'm a 60 year old professor. Thank you. You've done it. So, it's a pretty good shift, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And you're going um, into the premiere and we're moving to 2036. I'm sorry, my voice is down. When we're going to 2036 again, 
are they going to be entering right before they went into um, the Ember, or are they already out and are we picking up where we saw? We need we need we need to pick up where we where we were, but for storytelling purposes, there'll have to be some explanation. Otherwise, it doesn't. You, you, we need to know what happened. And of course, in, in our storytelling, we'll, we'll expose that. But will you, but will you pick up from like letters of transit? Uh, yeah. Has we'll that already up. happened? Or? Yeah, we'll pick it up. Okay. So, are we going to see the Walter that has the missing piece of his brain? So, are you playing a new version of Walter and then that you saw that? Walter's, Walter's always evolving, and, and really, I'm still looking. As I leave here today, I'm going to be in a script to try and work out how to finesse that. Because it's always a finesse report. So, because we, at the end, in, in Letters of Transit, he actually got that piece of brain back and became an arrogant pig again and a brutal man. I don't want to play that for the rest of the season. So, what I've got to do is work out a way of finessing that. Uh, that's my task. I start filming Wednesday. And I've got this, it's been waiting on me already. <laughs> How do I do this? It can be done. But playing a complex character like him, the challenge is always to do that. And to not drop into an easy cliche. And I've got 13 versions of him, I think, now, to choose from, including the animated. So, that's why. Um, no, I think, uh, no, I've, I've got to get away from that. Uh, I, I think you'll, I don't know, I don't know. But I will finesse it as carefully as possible. It won't be a new version. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it might turn out to be a new version. Speak to it. <laughs> is that uh, it? No. Uh, what would you, what is you, now that you're going into the last season, how are you approaching the season? Is it, uh, Me personally? Yes. I'm approaching the season with enormous trepidation. More anxiety than I feel going into a lot of things because I, it's such a rare, to say the least, opportunity to get a chance to finish up a story. A big, big saga. And, and so, so every step now can't be a misstep. You know, we can't be going off into tangents that need that, as we've done. We've done this lots of times, we've gone off into tangents. This one, I think, has to be directed, the story arc has to be directed really clearly towards an explosive, wonderful, brilliant ending. So it's going to be, I have trepidation, and I'll probably be doing more preparation to work for an episode on this than I've done ever to make sure we don't do the misstep. I don't do the misstep. Does, are you going to work a little bit more with the executive producers to make that work? Are you? I don't know how your collaborative process is, so is it going to be more collaborative where you really say, I don't know if it this... It gets collaborative if I'm not happy with it. Okay. <laughs> and then, look, I respect these people obviously, but there, if there are times when I feel that, that there's been a step taken, then I do speak. And it's not always listened to, but uh, I make it clear and clear. I think that there's a mis that we're misguided on where Walter's going. And I have the freedom within my own interpretation of the script to, to make those choices as well that I do. And everyone's got the same goals. It's just my responsibility is Walter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.